What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a topic that doesn't get a lot of coverage and that is dynamic member lookup. We'll do a base intro of it since it gets into the weeds of a pretty complex topic. And uh, yeah, for those of you here in the US who just celebrated Thanksgiving, hope you had a nice holiday. That all said, drop a like down below. Let me go ahead and create a new playground and let's talk about dynamic member lookup. All right, so we're gonna create a new playground here. We'll stick with a blank playground template. Let's be creative and call it dynamic member lookup because that's super creative. We'll toss it onto our desktop and first things first, I'll go ahead and expand our window. So before I talk about uh, the power of dynamic member lookup, I wanna share a little bit of history after we put together a basic struct here. And that history is why dynamic member lookup even exists. And the short answer is Chris Latner, the person behind Swift and a lot of the compiler related work uh, done at Apple for uh, Xcode, for Swift the language, et cetera, et cetera, has a big vision where Swift can interop with scripting languages like Python. And that has led to a lot of uh, you know, updates to the language that allow you to use it like a scripting language. Now, if you're not familiar with Python, not to worry, not really that relevant, but pretty interesting context for later explanation. So here we have a struct, we've got an instance of it, nothing too crazy. We can go ahead and throw a property on here and give it a value. And of course I can go ahead and print out my thing dot name and that'll print out our respective value. Now the way that this works is the uh, IDE here in this case, so Xcode basically takes a look at our definition of thing, sees it has a property name and spits it out. Now, what if we wanted to be able to allow the compiler, Xcode, to figure out what name is at runtime, such that we figure out when the application is running, what name is rather than prior, uh, rather than defining it prior to that point. So we're gonna go ahead and create a subscript in here, and we're gonna say this takes in a dynamic member, and if you're not familiar with subscripts, I've got a dedicated video on it, but the members type is gonna be a string, and we're gonna go ahead and return a string. Now inside of here, we're gonna have some properties. I'm gonna shorthand it and call it props. And we're gonna have some keys and values. So I'll add a couple, we'll say name. And let's go ahead and say channel. This will be iOS Academy that we're gonna to attempt to spell correctly. And let's see what else. We'll say platform is of course iOS. And let's say country, we'll say US. Now, if we go ahead and say, let's say we want to get the channel out of this thing. So we're going to go ahead and say, give me my thing dot channel. And rightfully so, we see an error here. We say the value of type thing has no member channel, which is absolutely correct. There is no property on here called channel. And the reason that it can't find it is because the compiler is basically doing a build time check and it's saying there's no property that matches that name here. So we need to go ahead and say that this struct thing is dynamic member lookup. In other words, it's capable of being looked up dynamically, which means at runtime. And as soon as you put that there, you're gonna see that this error should go away. And the reason it's not is because Xcode is just being dumb and we also need to have a return statement here. So we're gonna say from props, give me back the thing the value with the key member, which again is the inbound string. And if we're not able to figure out what that is or if it's nil, we're gonna give a default value of an empty string. Maybe we'll put a dash in there. Now, again, this is being dumb and giving us an error. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is hit this pause button and hit play, and you each should see that error go away. Now, the reason we're not seeing it, let's see why we're not seeing it. We've got a subscript dynamic member. We need to uh, not have a typo there. The exact uh, spelling does in fact matter. So once you make that dynamic member and fix my silly typo, you'll see that the error is gonna go away. But more interesting, if we go ahead and give this a run, you're gonna see it spits out the proper value, in this case, iOS Academy. So we looked for channel, let's go ahead and try this out for platform. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, and what we're gonna do, go ahead and give me platform out, we're gonna go ahead and pause the execution and run it. And of course, we should see iOS spit out down below. Now, the natural next question is, well, this is cool and all, but why is this useful? Because right now it doesn't seem all that useful. If anything, it seems more like a hassle than anything. So the reason this is useful is dynamic member lookup 
allows you to create functionality similar to scripting languages, which gets executed and interpreted at the time when your program runs. That's a really fancy way of saying that it allows for interop between other languages like Python and really interesting um, calling patterns that are more common on the internet, things like PHP and Python. Now, similar to the dynamic member lookup, there is dynamic callable, which allows you to declare functions that are not actually checked at build time, but rather are uh, executed at runtime. And I'm gonna have a separate video on this since it gets a little complex. Now, the one thing I wanna mention before we wrap up this video is this is a really naive example where we added dynamic member lookup to something, uh, in this case, a thing, which is a struct, otherwise a value type. Now, of course, you can add this to a class as well. So if I add a class here, I can add dynamic member lookup to that. It would be very similar to this, but where dynamic member lookup, and I, I feel like I've said that a million times already, gets really interesting is on protocols. So we're gonna comment that out so the error goes away. Now, if I create a protocol that is called lookupable, which makes sense in my head, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say that this protocol is dynamic member lookup. So we're able to look up definitions on the protocol in a dynamic way. Now we need to once again say subscript. We're gonna take in dynamic member and the member is going to be a string and this thing is going to return a string as well. Now because we're in a protocol, we're gonna say that this dynamic member has a getter and a setter. Now we expect that error to go away, just like that. Now the interesting thing about this is this is a protocol, an interface, and we can apply this to other objects. So let's say I have a class called bar, and I say that this is look upable. Now, first of all, it's gonna yell at me, and we're gonna say we're not conforming to look upable, so we're gonna hit the error and hit fix. And here is the uh, implementation for look upable. Now we can actually also get rid of the setter there. We only want a getter, so we can get rid of this as well. And let's say on this class we have maybe some type of values. Let's say we have some JSON on here. And let's say this is some configuration settings. So we're gonna say maybe setting, setting one is equal to one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can do two, three, four, and five. And respectively, we're gonna update these values like so. What you can do in here is simply say, return from JSON the member, otherwise we're gonna return as a default, we're gonna return zero. Now this is a more interesting example because this now allows us to use this look upable to more generically make objects, classes, or structs uh, dynamic member lookup, right? You don't need to annotate every single thing. So not only can you do that, but now you can start composing multiple protocols together. And I don't wanna to go too far into an example with that because this video is gonna get unnecessarily long and a lot of you are gonna get confused, myself included. So let's use an example of this one that we've got here. So we've got bar. I'm gonna say create an instance of bar. Whoops, we don't want curlies there. We do, however, want an initializer, just like that. And we're gonna say go ahead and print out bar and I don't know, let's go ahead and say we want setting one, just like that. We're gonna make this JSON here private, like so. And we're gonna go ahead and hit pause here in our playground. We're gonna hit play again. Now what we expect to see is a one printed out. Where is it getting one from? Well, we're using dynamic member lookup to check if JSON has a member of whatever we're calling for, setting one in this case, and we're returning its respective value. Now let's say we go ahead and say, give me, I don't know, bar.abc, which of course does not exist within the JSON. We're gonna go ahead and hit play, and we're gonna see zero back, because that is our default value. Now one really last, last actual important thing that I want to call out here is, you need to be really careful about using dynamic member lookup because it does not offer type check safety. Now what does that actually mean? When you're building your project, when you hit command B to compile, you can put literally anything here and Xcode will not give you an error and it will not correct you because what you've told Xcode here at this point is that your class bar is look upable, AKA dynamic member lookup and check at a runtime if this exists. So using this does have a lot of downsides in the sense that 
it might put your code at risk if you accidentally make a silly typo, which we've all seen on this channel is pretty often. So if I go ahead and give this a run, you're gonna see we don't see any error. We just see the default value get printed out. So that is dynamic member lookup, very, very high level overview. I've been debating if I wanted to make a video on this. It's really hard to verbalize and explain a lot of this. It gets pretty nitty gritty into compilers and runtime and build time. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Let me know if you wanna see uh, a more practical example. There are tons of articles out there online of other people doing examples, but it's not the most easy thing to wrap your head around, but let me know down below and I'm happy to do another video. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and haven't done so already, wanna stick around, keep the channel going and growing together. Hopefully we can hit 50K subs as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.